Welcome to the Salesforce for Startups Sales Cloud Overview. I'm Mike Creedon with the Salesforce for Startups team, and I'm happy to bring to you an exciting addition to our startups program. We've worked with one of our enterprise accelerator partners, Upshift Partners, to provide our program members a specially configured version of Sales Cloud. The team at Upshift has a proven track record in working with early stage tech startups to help with sales acceleration and sales process definition. Last year alone, their cohort companies went on to raise more than $200 million in follow-on funding. Today, I'm joined by Gabe Luna Ostasecki and Michael Bungertz of Upshift so that they can walk us through the sales cloud configuration that's provided through our Salesforce for Startups program. All right, so let's jump in and take a look at the actual Salesforce for Startups template. Now, to begin, the, the walkthrough that we're going to do today is going to be very kind of high level. We're going to kind of move through it fairly quickly and just kind of highlight some of the, the, the components of it that uh, are different from uh, or unique from your, your typical Salesforce uh, org. Um, now, when we, we, we set out to actually develop the, the template, we wanted to sure, ensure that we stayed aligned with those three fundamentals that we had mentioned earlier. One, uh, let's keep it simple. Uh, two, let's make it as user-friendly as possible, but also maximize the visibility into the sales funnel. And so doing so, we, we took a, a kind of a fresh look at the Salesforce CRM, leaned on our experience in terms of working with all the portfolio companies that we've worked with over the past year and a half uh, and, our, and, our, and our experience preceding that and really kind of identified that the features and functionality about Salesforce that are core to running an efficient sales organization. Uh, with that core feature set, once it was identified, we, we basically took everything else and kind of pushed it into the background to, to basically simplify that user experience. Uh, so if you've ever used Salesforce before, you may notice uh, and, and appreciate some of the uh, simplicity as we walk through this, uh, this demo. So to start, uh, I'd like to begin with the end in mind and actually take a first uh, take a, a quick look first at the actual dashboards themselves. So let's jump into uh, the dashboard, the company performance dashboard. Now what you'll notice about the company uh, performance dashboard is it's actually split into three columns, each one representing a function of the sales organization for every company. Uh, the first and foremost on the far left, we have marketing and lead generation. Then we have sales, and then finally we have customers. Uh, so to walk through each one very briefly, uh, really on the left-hand side, we want to get a general feel for the health of marketing and lead generation. That end goal for marketing is to create new leads. Um, so at the top here, we have new leads created over the last 90 days, which is basically a week-over-week -week volume metric for how many new leads have been created. Um, this gives us two things. One, are we hitting our, our targets? And two, are we trending up or trending down, which is pretty critical information because it gives you an idea of what's going to happen in the future. Of course, if your leads are going down, uh, your opportunity generation is most likely going to go down as well. So keeping an eye on some of those trends is very important. Uh, below that, we have leads by status, which is giving us an idea of when we have new leads coming in, what's actually happening with those? How many are open? How many are being worked? How many have moved into a, a, a qualified as an opportunity or have been disqualified uh, for one reason or another so that we can actually dig deeper into this uh, and figure out uh, and problem solve exactly uh, if we're having a lot of disqualified leads, what's happening and does that mean we need to change our direction or change uh, who we're going after? At the bottom here on the marketing and lead side, we also want to see, uh, based on lead source, how many are actually converting over into opportunities. We have lead conversion by source. Lead source is something that we'll touch on here in a, a moment, uh, but really critical information, really to understand um, what are you doing that's working and what are you do to create new opportunities and what are you doing that's not working so well that you should stop doing. Uh, so that gives us a basic view into what's happening on the top of funnel or, or lead generation side of the business. The second portion of this is where we actually have, uh, where sales actually takes place, right? And this is where um, uh, we actually manage this through the opportunities in Salesforce. So we have, similar to the lead side, we have the new opportunities that have been created week over week over the last 90 days. We have what's happening with those opportunities by stage, how far have they progressed through the sales funnel. And finally, at the bottom, we have win rate by source. And this is also driven by that same lead source that we see over here on the left-hand side for lead source by or lead conversion by source. Um, again, identifying, okay, of all the things that we're, we're spending our resources on, what should we be doing more of and what should we be doing less of? 
or stop doing altogether. And finally, on the, on the right-hand side, we have our, our customer growth. Uh, so how many deals are being won over the last 90 days uh, on a week-by-week -week basis? Where are those deals actually coming from? And then finally, uh, what's the actual customer or the cumulative customer growth over time? So the system is automatically going to look at all the opportunities that have a closed one status uh, and consider those, those uh, as customers for, for the organization. So when we look at kind of back out and zoom out on, on dashboards as a whole, um, the company performance dashboard here is really a, a very simple and fast way to get, a, get visibility into what's happening in the sales organization. Where do you need to focus some time in, optim in optimizing? Do we need to create more leads? Um, are those leads actually turning into opportunities? Do we need to change which direction we're actually going in uh, as well? So this is giving us that kind of information into uh, what's going on in the sales, uh, the sales side of the business and, and where we may need to make some adjustments. So that being said, this is a this is a refresh on the typical uh, Salesforce dashboard that we've you know again identified over working with uh, portfolio companies over the last year and a half. So next, I want to jump into the actual leads themselves. Uh, we'll jump into the leads tab and let's take a look at here at Tom Thomas, who's one of our sample leads that we've created. And um, this is where everything starts. Uh, all. Every, all activity, uh, everything that's in Salesforce all starts off as a lead and then move, moves through the funnel accordingly. Uh, a lot of the information here that you see from name and title and phone number, uh, number of employees, address, all that is very kind of basic information. But what I really want to highlight uh, on the lead record here are the, fo the four fields listed over here on the right-hand side. Here we have lead status, unqualified reason, lead source, and lead source detail. Um, and I won't spend a tremendous amount of time here, but I do want to do a quick overview of each of what each one of these means so that you can uh, understand the importance of them and actually manage in your system. Uh, everything else, everything in Salesforce will start by default as an open lead. From there, they're going to move into working. Once you've actually attempted to get a hold of them, then you have uh, uh, those leads that have actually been you've connected with. Uh, they've either responded to say an email or you've got a hold of them on the phone. Now, once we've moved them to working, they, they really don't move back anymore. Um, this set of lead statuses is something that, again, we've developed over time that, that works very well across uh, a, very, a, a great deal of organizations because it's based on one thing, and that's at each one of these lead statuses, what's the next action? What's the next thing that needs to happen with each one of these? So we know that if something is open, that we need to reach out to it. If it's an inbound, we need to follow up with them. If it's an outbound, if we're actually uh, it's a suspect that we've purchased. Um, we're going to send them an email or, 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 or start calling them. And that's where we move them into the working statuses, which allows a sales rep to identify where they're at in the process of actually working that lead and trying to qualify them. Um, of course, when it comes to leads, our number one goal with every lead is to, to see if there's actually an opportunity that for them to buy or, or we are, are trying to figure out if there's a qualified opportunity there. So once we start working them, only one of three things can happen. Number one, uh, we're unable to qualify them. We just they, they didn't respond to emails or your phone calls uh, or we maybe perhaps got a hold of them, but just we, we weren't actually able to figure out whether or not they were, should be disqualified or whether they should be qualified. Uh, and so unable to qualify is, creates a bucket, which then the next action is, these are our primary targets for re-engagement down the, down the road when we begin to recycle our leads. But the second bucket that they can fall into is that they're unqualified, which, basic, which means that if they're unqualified, it's either junk or bad, bad data, they, they maybe their profile wasn't a fit, they were out of the US and that might be out of your service territory, or they just have no urgency or a number of other reasons. And this becomes important to understand as you're getting hold of, of these leads and uh, you know, kind of adjusting where you're targeting and the, the types of lists that you're building, you can see what's actually happening that isn't working and, and per, per, uh, perhaps also why it's not working. Um, from there, we also have uh, below that lead source and lead source detail. Um, as I'd mentioned when we were looking at the dashboards, one of the, the, one of the reasons that this field is so critical is we want to understand of all the things that we're doing and spending our resources, our time and energy and our dollars on, what's actually working and what's not working and where, what do we want to do more of and what do we want to stop doing or do less of. And so lead source it gives us a uh, ability to keep these at a very high level. Uh, it's coming from a website. It was a sponsored event that we had thrown. 
and then the lead source detail gives you more granularity. In this case, we have a website capture that came inbound through the website and they had actually signed up for our newsletter. So it gives us that one layer deeper of, uh, of granularity. Now, if, if there's nothing else that's completed on the lead record, uh, I, just want to under, I just want to impress upon you guys that how important these four fields are uh, because you can get a tremendous amount of information from that. Of course, we want a complete record as much as possible, but as long as these four are kept up to date and, um, and watched, they will, they will tell you a lot of, give you a lot of insights as to what's happening on the lead front. Uh, below the lead record here, we have, you know, uh, kind of our, our related lists for activities and activity history uh, where we can log our uh, create tasks for follow-up or log phone calls and, and some lead history on the bottom. Again, what we've done here for the Salesforce for Startup template is take a lot of the things that were typically included in the lead record that weren't weren't critical to managing a lead funnel and kind of pushing them into the background. Now if we have a lead that's actually, um, if we have a lead that is actually uh, qualified as an opportunity, meaning that uh, we're talking to the right person, AKA we have authority, um, they, there's fit there, so we know that they're in the United States, that they fit our basic profile for somebody who we'd wanna go after, uh, and that they're interested in our product, we have a qualified opportunity, and we're gonna convert them over uh, into a, an opportunity at that point in time, which is where you'll see this convert button up here on top. Now with this, uh, when, what happens in, in Salesforce when you actually convert uh, an, a, lead, uh, a lead is that it goes and creates from this one record, creates three. So it creates an account, it creates an opportunity and a contact, which are all then related to one another. And it does that because every account, of course, can have multiple contacts underneath it. Uh, and it can also have multiple opportunities underneath it as well. And so uh, this is where this conversion comes through. Everything that's converted is uh, qualified. Uh, and we'd actually uh, just simply hit the convert button here and move move this lead over uh, to what we would consider the sales qualified opportunity. Now, when it comes to the account itself, uh, again, a lot of a lot of the um, a lot of the information here that um, has been kind of cleaned up and and we've really kind of refined it down to its basics. Everything starts off as a prospect, of course. Um, the system will automatically, based on customer one date, we'll see if there's any opportunities that have been won that are related to this account and, and list a date that that, that uh, deal was won here. Um, contacts themselves, pretty straightforward, kind of like the Rolodex, um, uh, just basic information about Tom Thomas. But what I want to jump into really quickly is the opportunities themselves here and, and talk a little bit some of the, about the key components here for the sales organization. Um, again, a lot of basic information, name, the name of the account, things of that nature, um, some information that's been mapped over from that, that lead record itself uh, for lead source and lead source detail. But again, on the far right here are, are those critical fields uh, that if we keep completed, uh, will give you a tremendous amount of information. One, close date, when are we expecting to close this opportunity? Of course, it should never be in the past if it's an open deal. Uh, the stage that it's actually at. So we have our uh, some basic stages here, again, that we found to work well over the course of all of our organizations that we've worked with. Uh, and then finally, uh, a dollar amount uh, that we would want to be included. And just from those uh, three fields, we can get a tremendous amount of information as to um, as to what's happening in the sales pipeline and, and where we need to kind of focus our attention. Uh, similar to the lead record, one of the things that we have added into the opportunity side is a lost reason. Because we want to know if, if we're actually losing opportunities, why are we losing opportunities? So that we can make adjustments further up the funnel. Um, some of those include poor qualifications, so maybe it shouldn't have been an opportunity in the first place. Some of the ones you'll see that are from that are similar to what we we noticed on the on the lead record or put on the lead record for no need or no urgency, but also a couple additional ones like you've lost this deal to a competitor or they're missing some features or perhaps you just lost momentum and and the the lead or um, prospect at that point in time had simply stopped responding to you, um, and so you know again really kind of down boiling this down to the core information that's needed to be able to manage a sales or organization effectively is here now for every one of uh, the companies that that will be using this you may have some additional information that you either want to track uh, for analysis purpose or purposes or you want to 
analysis purposes, or you want to be able to communicate forward, say, to your account management team or your customer service team as you're capturing that information through the sales process. But as a best practice, it's just good to relay at what, what one of the things that we've learned over time is, is to be very critical about the information that you put in here. Um, if it's not critical to workflow and, and, or if it's not something that you're going to uh, measure and actually analyze, then it may not have a place in your, uh, in your uh, records here because over time, uh, kind of proliferation of information within the system becomes very, uh, very easy to do. And the more information that you have uh, in the system that isn't being used, it's harder for users to actually understand what's important and what's not important. Uh, and that kind of dilutes um, it, it dilutes the inf the things that are important and kind of creates a a messy and uh, a messy system. So very kind of straightforward when it comes to the opportunity. Uh, again, we'll follow up with some additional videos and content regarding how to actually use these things more in depth. But one of the other things I wanted to highlight really quickly was uh, the the console itself, with all, which oftentimes goes. Uh, unnoticed or unused in the system and kind of before I do that let's back up really quickly and go into uh, let's say opportunities themselves um, what we have up on the top here are, are what we call list views which are basically um, ways to sort and filter filter uh, all the opportunities or all the leads that are in the system and you can create different lead views based on or lead or opportunity views based on um, your workflows or what exactly you need to be using them for uh, but the reason I, I, I mention this is so we have a, a My Opportunities list view here, which basically gives me a viewpoint into all the uh, uh, the opportunities that I currently own. Now, if I'm a sales rep and I'm actually working these opportunities, um, every time that you want to go into one of these, you have to click on you know click on your link and you're going to go into that record, and then you're going to have to click back out to go back to this list view. Uh, which can kind of just create a lot of um, a lot of friction in terms of working your pipeline quickly, and this is where the console really helps out, uh, because basically what it does is it takes that that opportunity uh, list view that we were just looking at, and using frames gives you not only a, a viewpoint into the list itself. Uh, but also into the record itself. Uh, so you can kind of see side by side. And so without having to click back and forth, you can just click through the list and work through, um, work through your, uh, your opportunity pipeline or through your lead funnel uh, uh, very quickly. So just a, a console is one that I always like to highlight because it often gets forgotten about and it's an it's a extremely useful tool for, for using. So again, just kind of recap on everything what we've done with the Salesforce for Startup template is uh, we took uh, you know kind of all the amazing things that Salesforce has built out and we've we, we identified the things that were most critical based on our experience with working with so many companies and we've boiled them down into some very core functionality um, now it's important to understand like you know what what each of one of these kind of critical fields that I had highlighted you know what they do how they're used to get information and again we'll be following up with some more information on exactly how to leverage and how to use the system more more in depth but this this really gives you uh, a good basis for starting and this is the same uh, same kind of uh, fundamental uh, Salesforce configuration that um, that we use for both companies that are just starting out as well as companies that are, you know, series B with 10 reps, you know, that have maybe built out a, a few more, uh, some more information within this, but really they're operating on that same foundation, which is what you're seeing here. So it should provide every, every, every company that's uh, going to be using it with a really good start. Um, so that's, that's really a basics, uh, the basics of the configuration and the walkthrough. Uh, and, and so we'll, we'll wrap it up there and, and uh, move on closing off the, the webcast. Great, Michael. Thank you so much for taking the time to do that. I know, you know for some early stage companies, depending on the stage and, and whether you've gone through this process, some of this can seem intimidating or confusing. Uh, what we're trying to do is kind of break it down to the most important pieces that you need to understand in order to be able to come out of that validation phase and, and kind of enter into that upshift phase and get ready to scale.